Moving on to Brexit, the <clears throat> Cabinet this morning discussing no deal and yeah. uh, coincidentally, or not coincidentally, rather, no, really. Giva Hofstadt, uh, the uh, yes. member of the European Parliament on their steering group, he has put out a tweet saying those like Jeremy Hunt who glorify <laughs> a no deal Brexit <laughs> are totally irresponsible. It's not the job of politicians to make the people they lead poorer, to remove opportunities, rights and make lives more uncertain. There is no such thing as a managed no deal. <laughs> yeah, that's no not political, deal. is it, really? <clears throat> I mean, really, well, you know, Mr. Political. Hofstadt... Yeah, yeah, exactly yeah. right. Mr. Hofstadt is playing political games. He knows that. The truth is, the uh, EU, I think on Wednesday, uh, due to make the announcement about the preparations they're making, yeah. should the uh, discussions and negotiations not come to anything, they're now already getting ready and planning yeah. for what they need to do to make sure that there is minimum disturbance at places like borders, airlines. In fact, it's already the case yeah. that the EU signed uh, the uh, transit uh, uh, agreement, which means that uh, no extra checks at the borders. Mm. It also means that the EU has signed up the landing rights and also the issues around health and safety and safety issues to do with aircraft. So those things are already getting but, laid. But, but, but they are doing it as damage limitation. They well, aren't. You know, no, <coughs> but they're not doing it because they think in the circumstance it might be a good option to have a no-deal Brexit. But as I understand it, some of the Brexiteers I've been talking to are saying there's nothing to be afraid of from a no-deal Well, no, I think there's a difference between there's nothing to be afraid of to what would you prefer. I would obviously prefer to have a negotiated arrangement where we have a period in which we move towards a free trade yeah. deal. Uh, that was on the table originally from M. Barnier mm. when I sat down with him about five weeks ago. Mm. He reiterated that plan. He would much rather treat us as a third country with a good free trade deal. Let's get on with it. The problem sits still <coughs> in the heart of this agreement that they're trying to make, which is this backstop, which creates your the real nightmare. Your, yeah, 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 but I'm saying, you know, but also the EU, it, it, it's the EU is being yeah. unbending and we're being unbending over it because we should never have signed up to it in December. And that's where the great mistake was. We should have never allowed them to take away our negotiations position by agreeing to sign up to this and also the money. So these things are there. Sometimes you need to go right to the wire with the EU. They need to kind of face up to the fact that they also don't want us to leave without an arrangement. It's not in their interest as much as it really but would they be in see, They see what Britain is planning as an act of self-harm. Well, I think they're actually reacting in worry now because uh, the truth is you cannot have a plan A if you don't have a plan B because negotiation yeah. or, always requires that the other side believe yeah. that you will do something if this fails. But they do have a plan And they B. don't I mean, believe that. They haven't believed market. that. They've got a customs Yeah, no, no. Well, they, I'm, to, I'm talking about the negotiations with us, in other words. So yeah. what, what they need to understand is that the UK has a plan to leave should they not agree a deal and then there are other aspects you need to negotiate and discuss around that. But the main point is, as long as they think you only have one plan, which is to try and get as good as you can in a negotiation, then the answer is they're not going to treat you carefully. And I have some intelligence on yeah. that, some really interesting information coming out of the German Chancery in which they have kind of wargamed this. And they've come to the conclusion that the UK is almost certain, they think, to sign the agreement because they didn't think they were serious about having any plans for leaving without a deal. Now, in the last week, <coughs> they've begun to change their yeah. position on this, and they begin to realise this may well be an option. But That's why Giva Hofstadt is making such a fuss about it, because he didn't believe it. Before. But it is now all damage limitation, even on our side, isn't it? So it is an act of self-harm. Well, I don't believe it's an act of self-harm. I Actually, the UK will manage and do very well, whatever the circumstances are, because I was <coughs> reading the other day the uh, German uh, chief economist at Deutsche Bank said, I'm not at all worried about the UK, whatever the arrangement, because they're the most flexible country on That's the world. That's medium term, though, wasn't it? No, he talk, no he's he talking, talking about right the way through. He said, he impact, said, as yeah. long as you get over the disturbances at the beginning and you have sense between both sides, he said, I'm more worried about the EU that is heading into a very difficult period with very high regulation and very high yeah. unemployment around the continent. And so of far, so we, we are losing uh, jobs in this country <clears throat> because of Brexit, aren't we? I don't believe that's the case. We've had record. We have record number of unemployment. Yes. We have the record low yeah. unemployment. If you compare that to France we, we, or, we also, or Italy, it's actually have, very high. We over also there. have companies announcing. Uh, that they're closing down, that those jobs aren't going to be Well, that's what available. we hear, but that's I think most... <coughs> well, most of the, the companies, let's take Jaguar Land Rover, it's a little bit nuanced here, although they tack on Brexit at the back end. Actually, it's true that they made some very uh, bad decisions about what the future of cars was. Yeah. They didn't go for electric, uh, they heavily banked on diesel, and didn't produce much petrol. So, you know, they accept 
that some management decisions weren't great. They may well say that the, the risks over Brexit make it a bit tougher. But the truth is, at the end of the day, all companies, if they're well managed, will have plans to get through. And this. the housing market in the prosperous parts of the UK, such as London, they're, they're tanking as well. Do you know what? I'm a little divided on this. <clears throat> as a London MP, I have to say, when prices of uh, houses don't rock it up, uh, I think that's got to be better for those at the bottom end of the market. Or when they fall 30%. When they do. Well, I have a... to tell you that at the end of it all, I don't believe that these things are forever. House prices go up, house prices come down. What we've actually seen yeah. is a prolonged period, both of growth and, of course, of price rises in housing. So, in a sense, all of these things are in the way short term. What we have to exercise is the UK, the fifth largest economy in the world, will do well whatever the circumstances, but obviously we'd like to have the EU face up to the fact that we can get a good agreement, providing they're prepared I mean, to I get mean, rid of their backstop. You used quite rough words. You said damn well <clears> step <throat> up to the plate. I mean, uh, you know, I don't know how to put this, but I mean... You know, who, who are you, a, a, a <coughs> Tory Brexiteer, to threaten a union of 27... I'm not threatening them at all. I'm simply saying countries. it's in their interest to make sure they're sensible and reasonable about this process and being unreasonable. And this is, I have to tell you, when Mr Verhofstadt comes out and makes comments like that, I know that he's actually worried rather than actually being on top. He crows when he's on top. He's not crowing today. OK. Ian Duncan-Smith, thank you very much indeed.